G'day guys, I'm Chris Dore and today's lockdown tip, we're going to talk about mending your fly line. Now, many people mend and kind of know how to mend, but not a lot of people do it properly, do it efficiently and do it effectively. So we're going to try and make the whole process of mending easier for you today, right here. Now, we're going to focus largely on pantomime, because as I'm filming this, we still can't fish. Um, rules may have changed by the time this goes to air, but uh, at present, we're staying away from the water. So remember our basic pantomime technique with the hand depressed, elbow low and relaxed by the side, making lift, 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 snap, chop and drop, lift, 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 snap, chop and drop. That's our basic casting technique, the foundation casting stroke according to Jason Borger. Right, mending. So far too many people put in far too much effort when they try and mend. They'll throw a beautiful cast out into the river with the fly landing, the fly and indicator landing just where it needs to be, right on that nice current seam, and then they'll lift the rod up to throw a mend and rip that indicator five feet backwards, lift that nymph up out of the water, and now they're no longer drifting in the trout zone. First of all, any, any sink time they've had with that nymph before the mend, they've ruined that, they've lifted it back up. So now the fly's drifting off downstream, not as deep as it could have been initially. Secondly, it's simply not where he intended the cast to go. He's pulled it away. Firstly, mends should be effortless. You make your back cast, you make your forward cast, it lands on the water. A mend is just simply a powerless lifting of the rod and replacement of the rod, uh, the rod tip to the left or to the right, however as far as you need to mend. That's it. Next time you're on the water, try it. Put your fly out where you want it to be, raise the rod tip, place it down to the left or the right. No, uh, no secrets there. One key to mending is you do not want to affect your cast or affect your drift by implementing a mend. So there are a few ways of doing this. If you're employing an aerial mend, as we remember in lockdown lessons 2020 when we talked about the reach mend and the reach curve, you want to make sure that you have enough slack line or enough shooting line there to slip as you perform your mend, so you're not going to pull your fly off target. Secondly, to make sure you don't move that indicator as you raise that rod tip, you don't want a nice straight tight line. If I make a nice dead straight tight cast and my rod tip's down low, the moment I lift my rod tip to mend, that tight line's going to pull my indicator. Again, I'm going to raise my nymph, I'm going to lose, uh, lose any depth I've just uh, created, or with the dry fly, I've pulled it out of that foam line. I've also moved that fly away from a fish that probably is noticing that right now, and probably will not eat that fly. So as you make your cast, employ some slack, whether you throw a slightly higher forward trajectory so you get a small pile down by the leader, or whether you throw a little serpentine or similar in to ensure that you have enough slack line on the water so when you lift your fly, you are using that line to play with so you can facilitate your mend. Now, for a bigger mend, you want to lift your rod nice and high. For a smaller mend, down by your rod tip, guess what? Lift your rod lower. You can also employ wrist flicks as you make that cast. You can send that cast out through there, Lift the rod tip, flick it out to the side and back, and actually watch that mend, that little wee curve, travel down your line closer to the leader. The other direction, make your cast, lift the line, a little wrist flick, back into the centre again, and you've just done it. Now, one thing about mending is that you don't want to wait too long after the cast to make your mend. You don't want your line to stick, to glue itself to all those currents, making it harder to lift the line and free it from the surface tension without again moving those flies or indicator. So preempt your mend, have a look at the currents, decide where your fly needs to be, how it needs to drift, where your line needs to be to facilitate that, and if need be, move a couple of paces to the side. Quite often, that's all you need to do to make a better cast, a better drift, without the need to mend so much. Secondly, the moment your fly touches down, lift your rod tip, place the mend. Always start with your rod tip down low, so you make the most of that mend. If my rod tip's up there and I go to lift the rod tip, chances are I'm not going to be able to reach too far down towards the fly, and all that hanging line beneath my rod tip is going to fall backwards with gravity, and again, move my flies and move my indicator. Now, remember we can mend upstream or downstream according to what the currents need to do. In regards to a downstream mend, if I'm standing in slack water in the eye of the pool and I need to cast down into that fast edge out there, if I throw an upstream mend like a lot of people believe, I'm further hinging my fly around, probably causing drag and reducing the drift. However, by casting my fly up into that fast current, throwing a downstream mend, my line and my rod tip is now waiting for that fly to drift back down the current and catch up. Hey, mending's not as complicated as you may think. Quite simply, it is a powerless repositioning of the rod tip. 
Your cast provides the power and the energy to turn over your fly, land it down by, land it where you want it to be. Your mend simply repositions the rear end of the line. Hey, so I'm Chris Dorr, and thank you for again tuning in to yet another lockdown lesson. Cheers.